Well, welcome back. I'm George. This is going to be like the final installment of this 120 volt PID system that we've got, the circuit we've got set up. Uh, we've gone through the basic model, we've added the amp meter, we've done that, uh, and then we've added our cooling fan, which are, th those are two options for you. Uh, you can add those or you can, you can skip those if you really like to. I'd recommend you throw a fan in there if you get a chance. Uh, but the amp meter is really, just, it really boosts your cool points. Um, the, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, set this up because I know you're going to use the, what they call a duplex. This is the receptacle. It's got two sockets on it. But we're going to set this up so that you can run the water pump off of one socket and your heating element off the other socket. Now we talked about that in the very early part. I told you we'd get to that. Well, here we are. This is going to be the last part of it. And then I'll leave it up to you to put it together and put it in a box. How's that? Here's how this works. Right now I've got two plugs in. Plug, two lights plugged in. You'll see light one and light two. Oh boy, it's been a long day. Now, if I turn the switch on, because I'm already, I've already got it plugged in. If I turn the switch on, uh, my PID comes on and I'm energized. I'm set at 86 degrees and it's sensing 83.3. So one light comes on. Now that one light comes on because that represents, that's our test. That represents our heating element. That's inside our still or inside our pot or where, where, wherever it's at. But that's what that represents. But the other light you'll notice is plugged in too, but that light's not on. And now there's a reason for that because we've isolated these two receptacles. Now I showed you this before and I'll show it to you again. The way we did that was a receptacle, once you put in a hot wire and a neutral wire, both receptacles are energized. But if we want to isolate the top from the bottom, what we need to do is we need to separate them physically. So on the brass side where the hot wire goes, you'll see that bridge that goes across the top right there. What I did was I took a pair of wire cutters and I just snipped that right there and I separated this screw from this screw. So therefore, when you put a hot wire on the top, it's only going to operate the top receptacle so you'd need another hot wire on the bottom screw to operate the bottom receptacle. Okay, so wise man, why did you not separate the one on the other side on the silver screws? Well, because they're common ground. Um, you could, but if you do, just remember, you got to put a white wire on there too. So in, in order to prevent that, I just, I just left that one there. So all I got to do is I've only got to work with one wire. It's that easy. So what I've done now, let me turn this off for a second and unplug it before I get to touching. Um, right here is where I've got that brass side, the brass screws where the bridge is. And right here, I took a pair of wire cutters and I snipped it. So now they're separated, the top from the bottom. They work independently of each other. Now let's prove that. I'll plug it back in. Now let me turn my system on. I got my system turned on, the PID's fired up, my light comes on, that means that my heater element's now getting hot because I'm set at 86 degrees and I'm sensing 83.2. So now my PID's saying, power, 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 I gotta get that thing up to 86, gotta get it up to 80, so let me give it some power. At the same time, I've got this other light plugged in, nothing's happening. What I need is I need some power to make that work. So I added another switch here. Now this is just a, a simple 15 amp switch. And I ran the black wire from the top because it works just like this switch does. This switch is exactly the same. Right now, this top and bottom screw are isolated from each other. So I ran a, screw, uh, a black wire from the top to the bottom receptacle. Now, the white is already hooked up. And I also took the liberty of adding another one of those four point joints on my main power supply, so I got two more spots I can plug wires into if I want to. Now, why did I put it there instead of somewhere else? Well, I wanted to be able to operate the fan or the, uh, the, the water pump independently of everything else. So that means that even if the system was turned off, I could turn the pump on or turn the pump off. Otherwise, I would have to have, if I put it anywhere else in the system, this switch would have to be on in order for this switch to work. Kind of make sense? Well, let me unplug it for a second. I'll show you. All I've got to do now is I've got to connect my hot wire. So if I put this hot wire into the four-port connector, I now have power that goes from my main line, where I've got it plugged in, my main line, it goes into the bottom of my first switch. 
It also comes off of that four port connector and it goes into the bottom of my water pump switch. And then comes out of the top of the water pump switch, of course, goes into the bottom of the receptacle, so that's going to make the water pump work every time I turn the switch on. Let's test it. Now, first thing we'll do is we'll test this switch to make sure it works. If I turn this switch on, I'm going to predict that that second light is going to come on. I'm right. There you go. The light goes off. If I turn this switch on, my PID is going to operate. It's going to sense the temperature. It's going to turn on. Then remember, this one represents the heater element. So the heater element comes on. So now it's getting hot. It's getting worked its way up. And it's getting to a point to where you've got it set. And you're like, okay, I'm ready for the water pump. All you got to do is reach over and turn the water pump on. Water pump's turned on. It's working. And it'll work as long as that switch is on. So there you have it. Now you've got a PID with an amp meter a coolant fan, an isolated switch so that you can operate the water pump independently of your PID circuit. Of course, any questions, just go ahead and shoot us a line. Now remember, there's, there are oodles and oodles of ways you can wire this to make it work. So, so don't think that this is the only answer. Uh, when it comes to electricity and, and moving electricity, you can do it many, many different ways. You can put joints, any, you can use a bus bar. It, there's a multitude of ways you can do this. So don't think this is the only way you can do it. But if you follow this process, you'll understand it and you'll come up with your own design. Now, you're ready to unplug this, take it off the wall, or take it off your piece of wood, get your box ready, and put your complete PID together with an amp meter, a fan, an isolated recept uh, yeah, receptacle for your water pump, and one for your heat Until next time, happy brewing.